Hey everybody, Jack Lisperini here with the next video in our Bolt Action Made Easy series and we're working on tanks. Got our tank primed and I'm also going to be working on all of my tanks at once while I'm shooting this video, but I'm just selecting this uh, Chaffee as the main tank to be working on. We're going to start off with a similar pre-shade technique to what we use in our infantry with some red-brown primer. I'm just going to put that all over the tank, spraying it pretty lightly, but leaving some of that black primer in our shadows. And real quick, I'd like to give a shout out to my good friend Kenny Boucher over at Next Level Painting for putting together this awesome World War II themed backtrack music and letting me have access to it. Thanks, man. Our first color is going to be Bazooka Green. This is part of the Warlord Games Rapid Deployment System. And just like our infantry, I'm going to be thinning this down with some Flow Improver and spraying a thin, semi-transparent coat over the whole tank so as to tint our black shadows with that Bazooka Green and tint our brown pre-shade with that Bazooka Green. It's going to get us a really nice kind of faded color look for these tanks in keeping with the sort of old World War II war film look that I'm using for my bolt action. Also, it's just a really fast way to paint tanks because we're letting the brown pre-shade do a lot of work for us. We have our highlights, we have our shadows, and we're going to have that nice kind of drab military color scheme going on. After that, we're going to pull out our second color. This is going to be U.S. Army Green, and I'm not going to thin this out as much with the flow improver because I want this U.S. Army Green to kind of pop a little bit. So still babying the airbrush a little bit, using some tight control on that airbrush trigger so I don't just blast color onto this thing because I still want our dynamic shadows and pre-shade to be part of this paint scheme. So I'm focusing kind of on the top of the model, looking at these hard angles on the tank's hull and using those to create dynamic shadows and highlights. When you're doing this, make sure to just take your time, be patient. If you're not used to this technique, try it out before you put it on your beautiful tanks that you really want to have on the battlefield. I always recommend using disposable plastic spoons to practice airbrush technique because it's cheap, it's easy, there's no pressure if you mess it up. You know, if you just mess up a plastic spoon, you throw it in the trash, you grab a new one, costs you a penny, great way to practice. Our last color is gonna be US Army Green, mixed about 50-50 with the US Webbing. And this is gonna get us a nice bright green olive khaki color to pop some highlights out on the brightest areas of this tank. I want it to still be kind of drab so that when we put a wash on it, it kind of merges all these colors together. So right now it's gonna look a little extreme, but that's okay because the first part of this video is just getting your models to a tabletop ready place or what I'm calling for these tanks like a factory fresh look. So at the end of the video, we're gonna have factory fresh looking tanks. You can play with those tanks on the table, but it's a good place to start. I'm gonna pull out some British battle dress brown and we're gonna paint some of the stowage, like if they have their backpacks hanging on the hole maybe some uh, tarps or satchels or kit bags on the outside of the vehicle. You know, that stuff that makes the vehicles look super realistic and lived in part of the war. I'm just going to do two thin coats of that. This paint is pretty good. Covers great. So yeah, just two quick thin coats on all of your stowage and we're good to go. Next, I'm gonna pull out some dark gunmetal. And this is by far my favorite 
paint in the new rapid deployment system. This is a great black metallic for doing all your gun barrels and everything like that. So, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull out the dark metal on all of the mounted machine guns. If they have some hole mounted or coaxial mounted machine gun barrels sticking out of the tank, I'm going to paint those in this as well. And I'm also going to get some of the tool stowage. So you can see most of these tanks have like picks and shovels and axes and maybe a sledgehammer or something stowed onto the tank for when they get kind of bogged down or they need to clear some road for themselves. So any of those metallic components, those tools, I'm also going to hit with this dark gunmetal. Gonna follow that up with some wood brown. It's a great little brown color. It works for all sorts of different things. You need a base coat brown. And we're just gonna hit all of the handles on these tools. So again, your shovels, picks, axes, sledgehammers have those old wooden handles on them. So I'm just gonna base those out simple and clean. All right, a couple of our tanks have some crew showing. So I have some tank destroyers and my M4 Sherman with a tank commander sticking out of the hatch and they need to get their flesh painted. So uh, the Caucasian skin is a great base tone, but I want a little bit of a darker base tone. So I'm taking that Caucasian skin and mixing in a little bit of the British battle dress to tone it down a little bit. So that way after a wash, I can then highlight it with the simple Caucasian skin by itself and get a really nice clean highlight for these hands and faces on some of our crew members. Having crew members out of the hatches is entirely optional when you put your models together, but it can give them some character to have a little bit of a crew in the hatch, or maybe the commander is sticking out looking through his binoculars or something like that. It just tells a story. It looks nice on your models. All right, second to last step on these factory fresh table ready tanks is decals. I've got my micro saw and micro set. I will not use decals without this system. It just makes life so easy. I'm telling you, first thing I do is put some micro saw on the back of our little decal paper. Let that soak through for a handful of seconds. And when I can push on the decal with my brush and it starts freely moving off of that paper, I will put a little bit of micro set onto the model and then gently place that down and it creates a vacuum effect where that micro set liquid wants to get out from underneath that, pla that plastic sheet decal and it suctions the decal down onto the model and the micro saw al also softens it so that it can conform to oddly shaped surfaces. If you have a rough surface or maybe uh, some nuts or bolts that that decal needs to go over or a curved dome surface it just sucks it right down on there and it goes totally smooth no air bubbles no folding nothing it's the greatest thing ever if you're going to do decals get micro saw get micro set i'm telling you it's a game changer all right so i put all the decals on all my tanks they're looking pretty good, but I have a lot more work to do on these tanks in the weathering phase. So I am going to seal up the tank with some matte varnish. I like the Vallejo matte varnish. I know this says Mecha varnish. It's exactly the same thing as the Vallejo matte varnish. It's just in a huge bottle because that's how they packaged it and sold the matte varnish in the big bottles. And I'm just gonna do a couple of light passes. Uh, think of it as like three little super thin coats over top of the model. You don't have to get every single nook and cranny. Just make sure that the areas where you put decals on are sealed in with that matte coat or else when we do our weathering and we do our wash, it's gonna get underneath those decals and it can either make them come completely off the model or it'll just look really bad because you're gonna have wash or grime or stuff underneath stuff that's supposed to be painted onto your tank. 
All right, here they are. So the matte coat, it only takes a handful of minutes to dry. It totally takes the shine off of those decals. You can't even tell that it's a decal in most cases. And if you can, after we do all of our weathering steps and seal the model again with a protective layer of matte coat where it's much thicker and we want to protect the model when we're playing with it, can't even tell it's a decal. It's the great stuff. In our next video, we're going to get into the finishing of all these tanks. We're going to get them battle ready. We're going to do a lot of weathering, make them look real torn up and lived in like they've been through the business. And they're going to look super realistic. I can't wait to show you guys. So I'll catch you all next time.